One neat thing about this project is there's going to be a bridge element like we talked about earlier. So we brought this incredible eight foot long by four feet wide skyline bridge. So this is going to be our unique bridge element that's going to cross over right about there. Team Aquascape is at it again. We are out way, 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 way west of Chicagoland where we're usually working. We are out in Chena, Illinois, about 60 miles west of St. Charles, which is also 40 miles west of the city. We are almost 100 miles from Chicago right now, but we are in beautiful God's country out here in farmland in central, north central Illinois. We've got a really cool project for you. We have a very large pond, but also a wetland filter, waterfalls. We're gonna have a bridge element on this. It is going to be really, really cool. This project Project is going to be designed not only for the elderly grandparents but the parents as well as their kids and grandkids so we're gonna have four generations of people enjoying this water feature so there's Brian kind of going over last-minute design changes with the homeowner we got the gang out here we set water level this big orange line in through here is all gonna be pond so we've got about a 30 foot pond from here all the way over to that pile of dirt right there we're gonna have a waterfalls over there probably about two foot tall waterfalls that dirt will all get fanned out we are going to have a beach entrance over here there will be a bridge going across the pond right there and then where I'm standing is going to be a wetland filter in this area in through here everything is sloping away from the patio we're gonna set water level probably about a good 10 inches down from the patio so that we don't have to bring in a bunch of dirt to fill that backside to raise everything up be really really close but first step is we'll get our first shelf dug which is going to be about 18 inches of water and then we will go down another 18 inches in a series of two levels Edges coming down through there, so let's get going. So as you can see, we have pond excavated. We are just kind of cleaning up all the little debris and stuff so that we can get ready for fabric and liner and then we're gonna start rocking and rolling. So we are at a total of a three foot depth down here at this bottom shelf. These are two nine inch shelves and then we went 18 inches down all the way around that top shelf. We left that area kind of unkempt because we are going to probably have the machine sit right there the entire time we're setting for this portion of the pond. So that may or may not cave in on us as we're going. So rather than bothering with getting that nice and perfect we'll cross that bridge when we get to it this area right here is where our pump vault is going to go that's going to house one of our pumps that will be feeding the wetland filter which is going over here and then the skimmer box is going in that hole directly behind it so the reason that we have the pump vault and the skimmer in the same area is so that all that water is drawing into one specific area and not creating any of these weird cross currents and creating dead zones inside the pond we will have at least the bottom half of this pond rocked in because it's granite and it will all go pretty, pretty quickly, especially with only these nine inch shelves. So we've got some technical stuff that we have to work in, but first let's eat. So we are back out here on this farmland project. What a difference 24 hours makes. It's considerably colder today than it was yesterday. I think it's gonna be in the high 40s, but the sun is going to start shining, they say, as you can kind of see behind me. We made pretty good progress yesterday. We stayed a little bit later. We got kind of this back wall along the patio rocked in. One neat thing about this project is there's going to be a bridge element like we talked about earlier. So we brought this incredible eight foot long by four feet wide Skyline Bridge built by Bernie out in California from Skyline Ponds and Bridges. So this is going to be be our unique bridge element that's going to cross over right about there so this is going to be one of the first things that we set today so that we can start rocking around it so in order to set this what we need to do is one reestablish where water level is which was about four inches below the top of that rock right there so when we do that we will reestablish it that bridge is going to come over it through here so we want to set this bridge as close to water level as possible so the two feet on both sides so this one right here and then this one over here will sit just above water level. So I'm thinking we will set that approximately the same height as the top of that stone that I just showed you. We've got a heck of a lot of work cut out for us today. The guys are finishing up the rough end plumbing on the skimmer. We are going to get that thing installed back over here by our pump vault. Go ahead and get the liner attached and then we're gonna start rocking and rolling all this area. So the bottom is basically done. We'll get some of those folds taped down that are down there and then gravel the whole bottom area and then we'll just start rocking. So we're gonna start bringing boulders over from back behind me, getting them close so that we 
we don't have to move this machine and just keep cruising. We should make really good progress today. Hopefully we can get this whole area done in through here and get the backside of the pond set. So it's gonna be a lot of big rock and then filling in with the small stuff in between. Let's go. Okay, so we are at the start of day three. As you can see, the pond is really starting to come together. The fellas and myself made incredible progress. We worked our way over to the wetland filter, which we got the whole dug minus the snorkel centipede. So the first thing we're gonna do is seam the two pieces of liner together. We don't have enough elevation change to pull off an overlap here. We're gonna have to seam these two pieces. While we're doing that, I'm gonna start staging some rock along the backside over here. You can see we got this bridge set from Skyline Bridges out there in Big Bear, California. It looks so, so cool in here with that very, very subtle arch. Let me actually hop up onto what is their concrete patio to give you more of an overview of what's going on. Bridge will lead you over and out back to the rest of the yard. We've got a lot of the edges done along this side. Uh, Matt and Ryan worked on that yesterday afternoon and that looks fantastic. We've got our beach area located over in through here. Skimmer, the pump vault will feed the bog filter. The skimmer is going to feed the biofalls. We've got a handful of lights in there. You can see one of the six watts is tucked in that corner. Also, a neat thing about this project are the pond power heads. So you can see one right there, which we will end up disguising with some more cobbles and probably some big gravel. There's also another one placed over there, and that is filled with cobbles and everything around it so that water can flow freely, get sucked through the back, the impeller, and shot out this way. The reason we put them on this near side is because both of our pumps are located on the other side, the opposite side of the pond on, which would be fine if this space back here didn't extend so far out that way. Unfortunately, because we have the water flow coming from the wetland filter and from the biofalls, everything's going to want to stick to this near side over here. So we needed something to circulate water on this back side or what would be the patio side. So that's why we put the power heads in here to push any debris that gets stuck in this corner or kind of cove area back out into the current and then sucked into the skimmer and pump vault. Next step, see me, see me, see me, and then we'll start rocking. difference 24 hours makes. Yesterday we started the day, we had the entire waterfalls to build. We had the wetland filter that we needed to finish digging, get the liner fabric, aqua blocks, snorkel centipede, all the rock in there. Really all we had was maybe 65, 70% of the pond rocked in. We stayed super late last night and kind of burning the midnight oil, just grinded it out, worked till after dark and got a heck of a lot of progress done. And we were waiting for it to fill. So overnight the homeowner had the water line going. We've got probably 6,500 gallons and it's all filled off of their well out here. So it took forever. But all I can tell you is wow. It turned out beautiful. We still have some finishing touches. Things like hooking up our power heads and lights, finishing up the gravel beach area, putting in a couple more stones, installing the dosing system, ion gen, auto fill line, that kind of stuff. But we are in the final 1% of the amount of effort that came in or got, got put into turning this project into what it has been created into and it just turned out absolutely spectacular. I'm gonna stand behind the bog filter over here, which you can see our snorkel sitting right there, but this is the view going all the way back. That bridge looks absolutely incredible. I got here this morning and the waterfalls was not running. The pond was overfilled a little bit, so you'll see some wet edges, but what that also helps us achieve is going through and making sure that all of our edges are good. In any of the areas that are currently wet, we can go through and double check and make sure that they are still high enough to hold all the water inside the pond. I absolutely love the shape of the pond. I love the interactivity of the wetland filter. We've got about six inches of water up here. We intentionally put in a bunch of flat stones for the grandkids to hop across and make it very interactive. You can see a lot of these destination type boulders in through here, such as this over there, framing out the beach area. We are going to extend that gravel beach area out another four or five feet. The guys are working on putting in some retaining stones back along there to help hold that gravel back but let me just kind of walk you through what we've got going on here with the waterfalls for 
being very, you know, short and compact. I love how the waterfalls turned out. We've got our big variable speed pump on there, and I would say it's the perfect amount of water. The goal was is to be able to not only enjoy the waterfall view from their enormous concrete patio over here, but also from inside the house. Yesterday when we were setting the frame rocks, I was running into a little bit of a challenge, making sure that I could capture all the angles, which is very, very important when building waterfalls, is understanding the viewing areas so that you are facing the waterfalls in the correct direction from where people are going to actually be enjoying it, not from where you as an artist are seeing it from which is right in front of the rocks themselves as you can see from all the way over here they've got a beautiful view of that waterfalls it's not enormous and it doesn't have to be but we needed it to build it to scale with the project we had an enormous amount of dirt that we generated through the three feet of excavation on this 35 foot wide pond but if you remember at the beginning of this video everything sloped away from this patio area and the patio sits a good foot above what was existing grade we actually built up everything in here here, which prevented us from creating a tall waterfall and an enormous berm surrounding it. It needs to be to scale with the project and that's also something along with the viewing angles when building a stream and waterfalls that you need to take into consideration is the amount of soil that you are creating to be able to create an appropriately sized berm for the project. A lot of times people have the tendency to want to overbuild the waterfalls, make it as tall as possible and sometimes it ends up being more of a fail than a win or a success success because it just looks out of scale with the rest of the project. So I actually really like how to scale again the waterfalls is with the rest of the project. This is an enormous pond. They wanted something that their kids could enjoy, get in and swim with the fish, be interactive with the ecosystem. We've already had frogs come in over here. Their four dogs have been in and out of this thing since we started the project. But now that water's in here, they are going to absolutely love life. You can see we've got our skimmer box over there. We've We've got our pump vault located just down below, right there, a little hard to see. So just to give you a breakdown of the plumbing, the smaller variable speed pump that goes to the wetland filter is housed in the pump vault. All that plumbing actually stayed inside the liner. We disguised it through rock work and ends up coming down into the snorkel centipede down that way. And then the pump that's in the skimmer is the larger variable speed pump that goes to the waterfalls. And if you can remember, we also have the two pond power heads, which we do not have hooked up yet, but we'll show you in a second the circulation that those create as they pump that water or push that water away from this dead zone which would be this little cove area right off of the patio. This pond is three feet deep. Again there's probably 6,500 gallons in here. We use 14 pallets of moss rock which gives us over 20 tons of moss rock on this project. We've got probably another 10 tons of granite and probably 10 tons of gravel on this project alone. So there's 40 tons of stone on this project. Project turned out absolutely incredible. We are going to use every last rock on the project. We've got a significant amount of cleanup to do, but this is it, folks. I love how it turned out. The customer is absolutely ecstatic. I've been getting text messages all night and or every night when we leave saying how awesome it is, how hard we were working, and how impressed they are with what the finished product is looking like. So I'm super proud of my team. It was just five of us the entire time. So for three and maybe one half day, we did a pretty good job, I would say and uh, I couldn't be more proud of how, the, how well they did. So hopefully you enjoyed this project as much as we did. Check us next time. Leave us a comment in the section below. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you out. And don't forget Team Aquascape every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Till next time.